Sabah everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you have a OnePlus 9 or a OnePlus 9 Pro, you probably already received the brand new Oxygen OS 12. Uh, this is based on Android 12 for our devices in the US. And you may have also noticed some aesthetical changes. It actually looks a little bit different than we had Oxygen OS 11 on our OnePlus devices. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about this update, also about the whole conversation going around ColorOS 12 and Oxygen OS 12. What are some of the things transferring over and what are the things that are actually staying on here? And why I don't actually think this is as bad as a lot of people are making it out to be uh, for at least OnePlus users. And I've been a user of OnePlus devices for many years. This is TK. Let's go ahead and talk about the Oxygen OS 12 update for our OnePlus 9 series of devices. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So this is my OnePlus 9 Pro. This received the update a couple of days ago, so I've been using it actually as a standard build. Let's go ahead and go home. Uh, you'll notice the first thing is that I'm actually running a custom launcher. I'm running Nova Prime, and that's because that's what I prefer to use on my device. There's nothing wrong with the standard OnePlus launcher. It's just, this is what I have. And if you go into the uh, display here or in the settings notification tab, you'll notice that it's slightly different. It is running on AT&T for me right now. I can definitely go in, jump into settings. And then from there, I'm logged into my OnePlus account. This still works, everything still works works the way it's intended to be. Uh, under about device, you'll notice obviously is that we are running um, tw Android 12 here. Now there is a little bit of a hiccup. Some systems or some units have received this and some units have not. So my buddy Juan Carlos does not. He actually shows an 888, although this one is showing a Snapdragon 855 octa-core processor. I assure you, this is still the same OnePlus 9 Pro is just uh, mislabeled and it's something that needs to be fixed with the next update. So I'm not really worried about that. If I check the update here, it tells me I'm running Android 12 security patch uh, of November 5th, and that's what I was expecting. And of course, it was updated on December 9th, as I mentioned a couple of days ago. Um, other than that, all that information stays pretty much the same Android version, Android 12. So we can go here, press it. And then of course, if we just make it land on the Android 12, it just basically gets there and we know where it is. So when we go into the recent tab, we notice that the change here is actually pretty prominent coming in from ColorOS. Uh, we're able to basically lock certain applications. We've used to be able to do that as well. Uh, but one thing that we don't have is the ability of actually swiping up to the top, which gives us the pop-up window, that little multitasking function that we have from ColorOS. So one thing to mention, although ColorOS may be at the base of this operating system it is not a color os built meaning it still has some of the unique features that oxygen os has carried for quite some time and also one of the other thing i want to mention is that this is not the first time that oneplus has gone and changed the ui elements on us within color within oxygen os if you remember from going from Ox uh, Oxygen OS 10 to 11, there was a major overhaul. They were no longer looking uh, very stockish. Uh, they went actually into the, what we had previously on the OnePlus 9 series, which was what it launched with. And now we're running Android 12, of course, with Oxygen OS 12. And for the most part, Oxygen OS 12 is a skin on top of Color OS 12. So think of it in that sense, as in there's Android, then there's Color OS, which runs its own optimizations. And then there are a few customizations done for OnePlus devices, still holding its own unique characteristic, although although they do look a lot like the one we see right now on ColorOS devices. The main thing we're talking about here, if we open up the notification panel, I'll swipe that out. Um, on ColorOS, we're able to actually span it all the way down to show all of the toggles. On OnePlus devices, on Oxygen OS, we can't. That's still something that carries over directly from OnePlus devices. So this is one of those things that you want to be aware of. Going into the settings, pretty much the same. You notice the icon differences are also very different. Um, here, we're able to log in with our own accounts. This is basically logged in directly in my ColorOS account. Uh, but you can see here that the notification, the, the icons are similar. Again, this is pretty much what you would expect. Color OS and Oxygen OS are very much closer now than they've ever been in the past. Although customizations are definitely very much focused on what we get here. Color OS 12 did receive the color-based theming that uh, Oppo is putting out with basically wallpaper picker here. It allows us to actually pick the color based on the wallpaper. Well, OnePlus devices didn't receive that yet. So we need to still see what OnePlus is gonna be doing. We have quick settings here that we're able to change the information as far as basically how the options are set. You notice that's also something that is not present there, but it is actually sitting as an icon. So a few things that are different here. If we walk into the wallpaper section, we also have different areas, similar wallpapers that we're able to pick, but again, unique to each one device. This is one of the reasons why I'm like, we really need to understand, although this may be based on ColorOS, it is still its own version of its uh, own implementation on for their own devices. Uh, customizations for the canvas here is present. We have access to that as well here. 
We, of course, have the emojis here that are built into uh, Opal devices, different options that we have. And of course, all of the stuff is, of course, excluded here. And that's not something we are able to use. And one of the other UI elements that are very unique here on swiping to the left takes us to the Google Now feed, where on OnePlus devices, we have access to the shelf that's been moved from the left swipe to the top. So now swiping from the top, if I'm actually, uh, let's go ahead and go out. If I swipe from the middle of the screen, it takes me directly to my notification panel. If I swipe from the left, that does the same. But if I swipe from the right side, that opens up the shelf. And on OPPO devices, that pretty much does not exist. Anytime I swipe from the top, anytime it opens up the notification panel. And of course you can customize this and of course change some of those options in there. Now, one of the other things that probably most of us will start noticing is that the implementation of the camera application here is again, very similar. The button placement, the icons, almost everything looks pretty much very similar, except when you start getting into the more options where we have the expand mode and the expert mode being labeled as part of Hasselblad. And here we don't actually have those options here because they were not part of this experience. Although we still have that nice camera system and we do have microscope, microscope uh, mode, which enables us to actually get very, very close to specific areas. Now in video, we notice we have similar options in here. If we jump into the primary sensor, we can see the different options. Uh, now, as far as capabilities, Whirlpool devices don't actually go up to 8K where OnePlus devices do. So if I go into the option here, I'm able to go to 8K 30 frames per second, 4K 60 frames, 4K 120. Here I'm able to go to 4K. And if I jump into the frame rate, I'm actually limited to 60. So there are still some very unique unique experiences that are kept on in here. And that's one of the biggest thing that I wanted to share. Um, overall, running the last couple of days, one of the other options that you probably didn't realize that, that did come over from ColorOS was the feature of actually enabled performance mode. This is something that we did not have in the past. Under the battery section, we'll notice obviously they look very similar. We'll go under advanced. Now we have the high performance mode. This is something that we basically carried over from ColorOS, which enables us to actually perform or get a better radio life experience out of our smartphone by just using it in the way it was intended. Meaning device if you want to run it at 100% full throttle uh, full benefit of the 888 with the x1 processor you can turn that on and it does mention that it does eat up more battery same thing here if you want to turn it on you're able to see the main that benefits here and of course use the battery and one thing to keep in mind they both still charge super super fast so you're able to charge this device in literally about 30 minutes or 36 minutes tops but if you don't want to run it you can actually disable that and you still get a very nice uh, not very th uh, throttled experience, but more tailored to run cooler than what the 888 can typically do if you're using it for producing content, shooting video and doing everything around. Now, one thing I definitely want to share with you guys here is if we jump into Geekbench, now you'll notice here by default, I did run a few things. So we'll go ahead and jump into history. And for OnePlus devices, when I first received mine, I went ahead and run it and installed the update on December 9th. I ran it with the performance mode turned off. You'll notice that it's running at 930, way below what a Snapdragon 888 is supposed to clock in. But when I turn on performance mode, I'm able to run it at 1122, which in theory is actually higher than some of the other versions that I've seen. I was running it at about 800 here, which again, does the same thing when you run it at, uh, with the performance mode on. It actually does benefit from that. Now, one thing you may say, well, this is throttling my experience. This is not giving me the full potential. They're not giving you, uh, they're not taking away the full potential. They're just letting you know that in this mode, you're gonna get the best battery life. You're gonna be able to do a lot of more things. And if you're not trying to push the device to its limits by producing content or trying to use uh, CPU or GPU intensive components or applications, this is gonna work for you best out of most of the time. And honestly, till I re realized that this device was not running in performance mode, I did not notice a difference between the two. But that is something that does carry over. One of the other things that did not carry over is this. This is a functional app that's basically called pop-up window. And that actually does not exist here on OnePlus devices. So we'll go ahead and open it up here. You notice it does not come up. It does go to recents. Um, and one of the other things a lot of people were commenting is the fact that it does this. When you clear, it doesn't clear everything. It clears literally everything except for that last app. So you can swipe up everything. And if you have apps that are locked, obviously they'll stay in memory. But this is something that we've seen again with ColorOS. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's just a different experience. And here, if I want to close it, I'll just go ahead and click the X and it takes us back home. Now I went outside because I wanted to show you guys first, obviously how the video and the audio are still performing on the OnePlus 9 Pro. But one of the other reasons I really enjoyed is the fact that now we have finally LHDC support on the OnePlus Buds. So if you picked up the Buds Pro uh, and you want to be able to get the best high fidelity audio, now they're actually supported directly within Android. 12. So all you have to do is pair it, use it and enjoy it. One of the things that you need to keep in mind that if you actually were using the beta version of the OnePlus devices, you decided to install it on OnePlus 9 or OnePlus 9 Pro, getting out of it is not as simple. There's a couple of ways of doing it. You can A, format your device and then downgrade it back into uh, what was basically a stable build. Unfortunately, that does, 
definitely wipes up all your data. And they do mention that, by the way, when you first signed up for the beta. The other way you could do it, which I've seen it work on OnePlus, uh, I think the earlier generations of OnePlus, is to wait for the stable build to be later, meaning there's a newer build on the stable track that, than the current beta track that you are, and obviously don't update to the latest beta. Once that's released, you can download the full image directly from OnePlus' site and then sideload that over your version of Android 12. And that should, for the most part, run it and give you the best performance there. And there, you're not going to lose your data. Last but not least, of course, you could just back up your data using the OnePlus app and then, of course, restore it. Those are things that you can do on the side. If you were running the beta, I'm pretty sure you weren't really not running it as a daily driver. But if you were, those are some of the things you want to keep in mind. So let's start talking about ColorOS 12 and Android 12, and of course, Oxygen OS 12, and what we have right now between Oppo and OnePlus. At the end of the day, I will probably say that more than, more than likely, actually, very few people are gonna buy both a OnePlus 9 Pro and a Find X3 Pro, or an Oppo device, a flagship Oppo and a flagship OnePlus at the same time. Both of these devices are intended to be for different users. I feel like OnePlus is still going to be the tried and true and what we've come to depend on them and out of them actually as far as devices and we're going to still see updates coming out. Oppo is a little bit more experimental. As you know, the Find X2 Pro is very different than the Find X3 Pro and more than likely the Find X4 Pro, if that ends up becoming the name of it, uh, is going to be different. They're going to have some new experimental uh, content going on in there. Next week, they're going to have an Eno day. They're announcing a new foldable, uh, you know, OnePlus, the OnePlus, uh, the o no, OnePlus. I meant to say Oppo, the Oppo N. And this is something that is, again, very much what Oppo likes to do in their flagship line. So at the end of the day, I'm not really concerned that Color OS is at the base of uh, Oxygen OS. Color OS has come a long way from what we used to remember Color OS was. After Color OS 7, Color OS 11 and 12 are much, much faster, smoother UI, much more customizable. And definitely, Oppo has listened to their user base and improved a lot on their ecosystem. OnePlus has done the exact same thing, but OnePlus has been going through an evolutionary change ever since Android 10 to 11 and now to Android 12. So. I don't think we need to be worried too much. I think it's not really the end of OnePlus. I think it's just more of a focused experience and a unification of resources from Oppo and OnePlus since they're technically merged a lot more than what they used to be in the past. So I'm not worried about it. I think you as a OnePlus user would definitely still be able to get the best features out of your OnePlus device. And I don't think we need to be worried about that part. At the end of the day, both OnePlus and Oppo are trying to give us the best that they can on the devices that they sell in the market that they're available. Oppo does not exist in the US right now, and right now pretty much it's the OnePlus experience. So we have the regular OnePlus 9, 9 Pro, we have the Nord. We'll have to see how this kind of, kind of goes through with older generation devices once they get Android 12, as I'm imagining that this is going to be pretty much the shared experience going on. And of course, Oppo is going to be going the same route. They're updating all of their other devices to Android 12. Color OS 12 is going to run the way it's intended. Um, as far as the hiccups, worries, or concerns, right now I'm having a little bit of UI element issues that's mostly probably will be fixed with the next update. And if it doesn't, I'm probably going to end up just doing a reset on my OnePlus 9 Pro and then just start fresh. Typically, major Android updates will come with a little bit of hiccups here and there. If it's an app specifically that you're getting an issue with, uninstalling the app and reinstalling it typically fixes that problem. But if it's a UI thing, my recommendation is to go ahead and just, if you can, back up your data, reset, start fresh, everything will work just as it's intended. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of this video? I wanted to really address this because I saw a lot of conversations going on online uh, about people feeling like OnePlus is just giving up and they're just gone. At the end of the day, you have to understand they've evolved from what we first started loving about them. And now they're trying to basically just keep going and evolving and giving us better experiences with every generation that they release. So. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. And let me know what you think of this video and what is your favorite feature of ColorOS 12 or OxygenOS 12 on either your OnePlus or your Oppo device.